Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a very special video for you guys. It is about top 5 mod author etiquette tips. Some of these tips will mostly center around mods that add items to the game, whether it's outfits, weapons, architecture, textures, etc. Most of these tips though will have outfits in mind. I am primarily an outfit slash weapon porter, but these tips can still be beneficial to anyone that streamlines their work and keeps them organized. Being organized as a mod author is integral to developing good rapport with the community and maintaining consistency when making mods. Streamlining your work will make your life easier for consecutive projects and it will also make the lives of other people that you work with also easier as well if you're more organized. So without further ado, here are my top 5 tips for etiquette as a mod author. Number 1. File Structure Organization all your files for any category should always be consolidated in one folder irrespective of the category of asset it is. What I mean as an example is having a folder with your name in the meshes category and then inside that folder is where you keep and organize all your assets. Same thing for the texture folders same thing for sounds, music, etc. You can see in my meshes file system that I have a folder called Sun Jung stuff and inside it are folders of all the outfits slash weapons I have done. Why is it important to do this? This is important because it reduces the amount of clutter inside the main asset folders you see how inside the Sun Jung folder, I have 60 plus folders. Imagine if those 60 plus folders were instead inside your meshes folder. Now imagine other th authors doing it. Your meshes folder will be super cluttered and messy. For most mod users, this doesn't matter. But for mod authors that often navigate through file systems while modding, this matters a lot. You can save seconds if you have fewer folders. And I know seconds may not sound like much, but everything adds up extremely quickly while we're creating mods. It can legitimately add an extra 10 to 15 minutes in our collective workflow if we have to look for our own files and the folder is messy. So trust me, organization is key. Alright, so moving on to number two, keep file names consistent. This advice sounds vague, I know, at first, but the keyword here is consistency. I like to follow the naming scheme of vanilla items in Skyrim. I also borrowed Nina Rim's naming scheme as well. For anyone that has tried my mods, you might have noticed that all tops are called upper, bottoms are called lower, boots are boots, and so on. Instead of upper, you can also use caress. In general, anything worn at the feet, I tend to just label as boots even if they are high heels or simple wraps at the feet. Anything on the hands or forearms I call gauntlets. I like to maintain this consistency because it makes it easier to be organized in terms of naming in the ESP and can even make it easy for people porting your work to know what is what. I recommend using this naming convention for things like mesh names, body slide files, texture names, and ESP form IDs. For weapons, keep first person meshes as first person, XYZ, and for the third person weapon, it can just be the name of the weapon. 
Alright, so tip number three. Make mod installations easier. One of my pet peeves is when my authors separate all their files into different folders, which causes confusion on what file is the most updated. Users are left wondering which one is the main file, which one optional. And yeah, it just creates this frustration, right? Well, the solution to this is creating a full mod in your mod installations. A full mod is an XML based installer that allows a modder to create a GUI to select mod options for installation. A full mod installation can allow users to choose what files they want to select and they only have to download the zip file once. The only exception to this would be the inclusion of textures. I can understand that mod authors separate texture files in case users want to save on hard drive space or if they can't run higher resolution textures. Faux mods also give your mods a more professional look. They are great for when you are offering options such as body types, plugin types, color types, or anything you want. If you want some help in how to create full mods, you can find the program in this link. And of course, I will link it down below. If you want to learn how to use it, then I recommend this YouTube video. Again, link will be in my description box. It's a little bit long, I know, but the in-depth information is invaluable to creating more professional mods. Alright, number four. For outfits that have numerous parts to build in body slide, use slider groups. A slider group is an XML that users can use to quickly batch build the specific outfit and all its parts. This is very, very useful for when the user has a lot of outfits to sort through if they were to manually select the outfit part and pressing build. It's also useful for huge outfit mod packs that come with numerous outfits and building one by one can take longer than the release of the Elder Scrolls 6. <laughs> However, please do not abuse this function. I've seen mod authors create slider groups for outfits that only have 3 to 5 armor pieces. This is a huge waste. If all authors started creating slider groups for every outfit mod, then the slider group window will be just as clutter and completely defeat the purpose of this. This is just my opinion of course, but I recommend only creating slider groups for your mod if your outfit comes with 8 or more pieces to it. Alright, so the last tip, tip number 5, is make your mods into an ESPFE. An ESPFE is a plugin type that loads formats into the ESL space without the negative effects of an actual ESL, which includes corrupting saves if uninstalling it mid-save. ESPFEs are one of the blessing updates that Bethesda has given to essentially have unlimited outfits, weapons, and other mods that is able to be ESLified. If you don't know how to make ESPFEs or know what mod qualifies for it, there are plenty of YouTube videos that explain this feature. But I cannot stress enough super simple mods like outfits require they be an ESPFE. Otherwise, it is a massive waste and most users will most likely not download your mod and instead use their plugin space for something bigger like quests, followers, etc. There is zero reason not to use ESPFEs. Anyway guys, so that is all of my tips. I kind of have a few more to share, but they are Harborsen outfit related, and I want to make this video as general as possible. So 
that is applicable to other authors that don't do outfits. And if you guys have noticed already, I also try to also kill two birds with one stone and make this an informational video plus an ASMR video. Yes, I do read all of your comments in my YouTube videos, um, in all of the materials I've posted, so I try my best to respond to your request when I can. So I'm sorry if ASMR is not your thing, but I still hope that you find this video super informative for you. Regardless, I look forward to any mods that you guys make and please tag me or let me know if you use any of these tips or if you find them helpful. I will end the video here and I would love to hear comments from you guys if you have any other tips that can be beneficial to mod authors. Until next time, bye!